Do you know the difference between making space and feeding? If your answer is yes, then how confident are you that you can actually tell the difference? If you answered no, then, well, hopefully, I will show you exactly what the difference is. In this video, I will show you four different clips and ask you if it's making space or feeding. Then we'll break it down together. Okay, let's take a look at the first clip. Was that feeding, or was it making space? That clip is unmistakably a feeder dying like a moron. I know that because I was that moron. One good rule of thumb about dying is that if you ever do it anywhere close to one of your objectives, it's a feed. The reason for this is that unless the enemy team simultaneously has a 5-man heart attack, they're going to hit the objective that's right in front of them while the game is 4 versus 5. On top of that, the enemy team wants to play in front of your towers already, because they have to literally kill them in order to win the game. So, if you die here instead of on the enemy side of the map, you're dying exactly where the enemy team wants to play. Also, you aren't forcing them to waste their TPs in order to kill you. Not only are TPs very expensive, but way more importantly, they have an 80 second cooldown, which is longer than most of the ultimates in the game. And to put it bluntly, the TP scroll cooldown is actually more important than most ultimate cooldowns, because if you use it, then you're locked in an area for 80 seconds. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the second clip. So, this death is a little bit more complicated than the first one that we looked at, particularly because the death occurs on the enemy side of the map, nowhere near any objective. Also, if we look closely, Slark is farming for the entire time that this death is happening, so at least there's a trade happening here, right? Not exactly. The gold lead in this game is 1k in favor of our boy Windranger, who is dying in this clip. So, my question to you is, other than BSJ, what sort of Slark can't safely farm in a game where they have the 1k gold lead? Nobody, at least not anybody that can actually play Slark. He is extremely safe to farm, so this death results in no extra space because Slark had space to farm anyway. Therefore, another rule of thumb about dying is that it's only space creation if the space to farm doesn't already exist. Alright, let's look at the third clip now. Once again, we have a death that is a lot more complicated than the first one that we looked at. It occurs on the enemy side of the map, extremely far away from any objective, so that's definitely good. Also, there is a 5k gold deficit, so space definitely needs to be made by somebody for people to farm. But the problem here is that Faceless Void is the carry, and so the question is, if he's making space, who's it for? Nobody. There is nobody whose life or farm is more important in this game than his. Any other hero could be doing this exact same thing, and you can argue that it's space because at least Faceless Void is farming. Perhaps, though, you could argue that this death stopped the high ground push that's happening here because now Pudge has to leave to go bottom. But on the flip side, if the Radiant is any good, they'll quickly back off and wait for Pudge to regroup with them. And particularly because Faceless Void is the carry, he's taking all of the farm, and so he's high level and high net worth. As a result, he can't afford buyback and his death timer is long, so he definitely won't be able to defend the racks. If a support dies here, on the other hand, they're usually broke and so their buyback is cheap and their death timer is short, and so they would be able to defend the racks. For this reason, dying as a carry is almost always a feed, and honestly a huge reason that the carry role is suited perfectly for extremely calculated people. Okay, let's take a look at the fourth clip. Dyer's 
Although it looks stupid, this death actually satisfies all of the conditions of making space. Number one, it's on the enemy side of the map, far away from Roshan or any tower, and Weaver's death timer is only 30 seconds, which isn't enough time for the enemies to move to and kill any of these objectives. Number two, there are four heroes, including the carry, farming four different areas of the map while this is happening. And if we look at the gold deficit, it's 8k at 19 minutes, which means people certainly do need space to farm. Number three, during this death, Weaver forces one TP scroll and wastes around 30 seconds of Earth Spirit, PL, and Silencer's time. And you may think that this translates to 30 seconds of Radiant Free Farming, but that actually barely scratches the surface of how important this death is in terms of space. With a gold lead this large, what often happens is that the enemy team forms a barricade around your base and then they choke you out. Ironically, in this scenario, the safest area to farm is directly in front of the enemy base. So, if this is happening in your game, this is the best time to run as far away as possible and kill yourself. This way, the enemy team breaks their barricade just for a moment and, if all goes well, then you'll end up in a situation like this where your team is actually able to venture out, farming the space that is behind the barricade, hopefully for long enough to win the game. The more time that you waste while doing this, the greater the window of opportunity that your team has to get behind the barricade. If you don't do this, then prepare to slowly lose in the most painful way possible. So, what's the takeaway? Well, oftentimes in Dota, people die and excuse it as space creation when it's really just game ruining. Don't listen to these idiots. Judge the death for yourself. Other times, the game is in a horrible state and somebody has to go die. Recognizing that, you can be that guy. And more often than people realize, this results in you winning games that otherwise seemed completely impossible.